Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since I've done a video like this, so I thought I would give it a shot. A company reached out and offered to send me this fanless mini PC. It's the Codlix Fanless Mini PC GN41. And I've looked at a few of these in the past and usually they're kind of middle of the road, but this one sounded interesting. Here's some of the specs you can see on the back. It does have the Intel Gemini Lake Celeron N4100 processor, not top of the line, obviously not even sort of middle of the range. This is relatively low end, but for something that's mini and fanless, it's decent. Integrated Intel graphics, but this is where things get kind of interesting. 8 gigs of built-in RAM, 64 gigs of built-in storage, supports an SSD, an M2 SATA SSD up to 256 gigabytes, has an additional 2.5 inch hard drive interface, and gigabit LAN, and also built-in Wi-Fi, 2.4 gig or 5 gig Wi-Fi, A, B, G, N, or AC. So it supports the grand majority of everything you could think of for a mini PC. So I think without any further ado, let's open it up, see what comes in the box, get it set up, and maybe test it out. So you get a little operation guide here. Shows you the layouts of all the buttons and the ports and the basic operation. And here's the DIY steps if you want to take a look at that. Here's how you'd open it up to put the hard drive in and the SSD slot, although that one's going to be kind of difficult to get to. It looks like it's a lot of disassembly. Still probably won't be terribly difficult. I think I saw a video of somebody doing it. Probably Lon Seidman. I watch a lot of his videos. Here is the product itself. It's not quite as many as I would have expected. There it is. It also comes with a really, really short HDMI cable. A second very, very short HDMI cable. It's have two HDMI ports? It does not. A little confusing there. What appears to be a mounting bracket, some little rubber feet that you can stick on the bottom, and the power brick, which if you can see it is 12 volts at 2 amps. And taking a quick look around the mini PC itself, you can see the branding here on the top with the vent holes. Like I said, it's fanless, so there's not going to be any fans blowing. On the bottom, you have this section you can open up to put in your two and a half inch hard drive, laptop hard drive if you've got one, and a couple of screws if you want to mount it up using that plate we showed earlier. It does have the four feet already installed, so I'm guessing those uh, other included ones are just replacement feet. Just more vent holes on this side, nothing on the other side. On the front, you have a USB Type-C port, two USB-A ports, a micro SD card slot, power button, and I would assume the status LED. And on the back, you have the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, two more USB ports, gigabit ethernet, HDMI, VGA, the power port, and what looks to be the reset button. You just have to stick a paper clip in there to force it to reset. And I'm just checking on the listing to make sure it doesn't mention anything other than just USB-C on the front here, so I don't think it's Thunderbolt or anything. It says it does support 4096 by 2160 at 60 hertz and plays 4K video smoothly. But realistically, the, the big thing that made this interesting to me was a couple of things. Eight gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, because most mini PCs come with 32 gigs of storage, and the ability to add two additional hard drives to it through the 2.5 inch hard drive and the M7 if you want to open it up to get to that. So I think what I'll do right now, I'll go ahead and get this hooked up and we'll see if I can do some video capture. I actually just purchased the Elgato Cam Link 4K to see if I can do 4K video with this because somewhere in the move I managed to lose my HDMI capture device that I used to use. So we're going to see if we can capture some 4K video from this, so we'll be right back. And there you can see the Codlex branding. And it looks like we're ready to go. After just a little bit of time it took to come up the first time, now I can select what language I want, what time zone I'm in and everything. And that's interesting. It says, why did my PC restart? There's a problem keeping us from getting your PC ready, but we think an update will help get it working again. So apparently I need to put it on Wi-Fi to get it to come up the first time. And several hours later, we're back. Had a bit of a fight with this thing, as you may have seen earlier. It came up to that, why is my PC restarting? And that is an infinite loop. So every time the machine would come up, I would have to tell it my location and language again, give it the network information if it hadn't forgotten it, and then it would reboot again. So I found on this company's forums a, an image that I could download and use. It is installed on this machine now. And as you can see, I have Windows 10 Pro. Windows 10 Pro is activated with a digital license. It shows the Celeron N4100 CPU with eight gigs of RAM. If I switch on over, we'll pull up the device manager and the PC. You can see we have 57.4 gigs of space with 42.8 gigs free. We have all the drivers installed from the, the USB drive that I made after finding it on their forum. Once I redid some of their batch scripts because it had a problem, I was using an external Samsung SSD instead of using a thumb drive and their batch scripts didn't work right with that so I had to actually rewrite them a little bit. But anyway, a couple of hours later I've gotten everything installed and as you can see it's, it's Windows 10. Windows 10 Pro, very nice to get a Windows 10 Pro license with this. Not a whole lot installed. I didn't connect it up to my Microsoft account just because I didn't want it to pull down all my settings. And as you can see, it's just plain Jane. It's Windows 10. 
the performance. I, I tried it a little bit. Right now I've got it attached to my capture software, my capture device. So it is feeling a little bit sluggish to me, but when I was plugged directly into it with a monitor, it still felt kind of sluggish, especially when I got to using a browser. Just It accidentally opened up Microsoft Edge for some reason, and it just it took a little while. Again, it's a Celeron. It's not a Core i3, Core i5, or anything. So it, it's going to get the job done for minimal tasks. Realistically, I would kind of see myself using this as a home server or maybe a media device. I'll probably put Chrome on it and I'll probably attach my Drobo to it for file management and use it as kind of a file server. And we're back a couple of days later. I decided to take some time and see how this thing would perform in a media capacity. And this is actually one of the most impressive things I've seen out of a box like this. I've got Chrome installed now. As I mentioned earlier, I tried it out with, uh, with Edge. It accidentally came up and it was just kind of slow. It's kind of sluggish. But as you can see, I've got this 60 frames per second 4K video, Ultra HD. I do have it set to 4K right here. It says 2160 by 60p. And now if I play it, and I'm not gonna play much of it, I'm trying to avoid copyright here, but go ahead and play. You can see I hit the space bar and immediately started playing back. I hit the F key to go full screen. Uh, now on my capture device, it looks like it's going kind of slow, but I tested this earlier and it looks great. It's playing back super, super fast, so I cannot complain about this as a media playback device in the slightest. It looks amazing. And even though I don't normally like to follow benchmarks, I decided to run a quick benchmark on this one. I've got Geekbench on here, as you can see. I did run it a couple of times, and it was pretty consistent, so single core score was about 1,800, multi-core about 5,500. Very much middle of the road, but for the size and for the fact that it's fanless, definitely gets the job done. And you can see I did run it a couple of times, about the same the, the first time and then there's the second time. And I believe that's where we're gonna be wrapping this video up for today. Probably should do some more extensive testing on this, but honestly, this will probably end up hooked up to my Drobo unit, using it for file management and home storage and server usage. But as I did see, using this as a media device, it would actually work really well, I think. You just have to keep the expectations realistic. And for the price point, I just looked around on Amazon, and if you're looking for mini PCs to find something that has, one, it has 64 gigs of storage, most of the ones I've looked at are 32 gigs. Most of the ones still out there for twice the price of this are 32 gigs of storage. And to have eight gigs of built-in RAM, where the ones that I've looked at in the past have had either two or four gigs of RAM for the same price, if not more. Definitely a pretty impressive little layout. I've been pairing it up with this little keyboard mouse combo device that I've got. It's a jelly comb keyboard I made a video about a while back. Has a relatively small attachment for it here on the back. And again, lots of ports to be used on this. Four full-size USB ports, one USB-C port. The only problem that I've had with this so far was when I first got it, like you saw, it would not come up, kept restarting, kept restarting, and so I just had to reinstall Windows on it, and they did have an image for it. I'll have a link to their forum down below where you can get the information on reinstalling it if you decide to pick one of these up for yourself. I think it was 229 bucks if you wanted to buy one. They did ship it out for free to me for review. And the link that I'll put down below, it's an affiliate link. So if you happen to buy one of them, I'll get a little bit of a kickback on it. And I definitely appreciate that. So thanks as always for watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you happen to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified when new videos do come out. Ring the notification bell if you want to actually receive those notifications because YouTube doesn't do that anymore. And I'll see you again next time.